Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. After we exposed LG last year for being a bit dodgy with reviewers and asking for editorial control over what should be an independent review, one question I get asked a lot is, well, did LG blacklist you or refuse to send any more review samples? Did they pull an ASRock? Well, today we get to answer that question with a review of the LG 27GP950. Now, I was fully expecting never to receive this display, and indeed, we did get it later than other reviewers, but I'm happy to say that LG reached out to us and provided us with a review sample. No strings attached. No money exchanging hands, no editorial control or directions, or even notes. Just a simple, fair, independent review process. New people to chat to at LG, no issues whatsoever the way it should be. And I do have to give kudos to LG for responding positively to our coverage instead of just mashing the blacklist button. So I guess that's a, a quick update to the LG situation at the start of this video. So the 27GP950 is a revision of their popular 27GN950 4K 144Hz IPS gaming monitor that we recommended for some time. This isn't the first monitor that LG has revised. They tend to do so on a yearly basis for some products, like we saw with the 1440p 27GP850, but to be clear this is a revision. I'm not expecting a huge difference in performance, although you never know, which I guess is why we're testing it. The main reason why this revision exists is to address one of the fundamental issues with the original 27GN950, the lack of HDMI 2.1. Not including HDMI 2.1 limited the old model to just 60Hz over HDMI and hurt its usability with new devices like the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5. But the 27GP950, well, we're getting two 48 gigabits per second HDMI 2.1 ports, giving us 4K 120Hz support for modern input devices. Design-wise, the 27GP950 is almost identical to the 27GN950. It uses the same stand assembly, same general design for the rear, and has basically identical bezel sizes around the 27-inch panel. There's only a few minor changes to the design elements that I could spot, and nothing at all significant. I quite like the design used here. It does have a few red highlights on the stand, but I appreciate the functionality, such as height adjustment and the easy-to-access ports on the rear. I also think LG has one of the best implementations of RGB LEDs on the rear of a monitor. They surround the stand connection in a giant circle and genuinely get very bright, so they can be used as ambient effect style lighting if you want. Many rear RGB elements on monitors are far too dim to have any impact in most setups, but these LEDs can cut through room lighting to still be visible, so at least they are useful. The 27GP950 gets LG's current generation of OSD design, which is easy to navigate, and includes an average set of features, such as crosshairs and black boosting modes, plus the usual color controls. There are some omissions though. There's no backlight strobing functionality, which does make a bit of sense as LG's nano IPS panels are not that well suited to strobing, and you don't get a KVM switch, which is becoming a more popular feature on gaming monitors. Let's talk about performance, and like other LG monitors, we get four overdrive settings. Off, the first setting, is not how I would imagine most people are using this display. There is no appreciable overshoot, but response times are not as tight as they could be. The normal mode at 160Hz is slightly faster than the off mode, and this preserves the zero overshoot experience we found earlier. This setting does have slight blur trails at times, but the effect is minimal, and overall cumulative deviation is very good, around the 500 mark. This suggests a decent balance between response times and overshoot, but we can do better. The fast mode is the ideal mode for gaming at 160Hz. Response times improve to around 5.4 milliseconds on average, and overshoot is still minimal, leading to an optimal gaming experience. Cumulative deviation has also fallen relative to the normal mode, which tells us this setting is better optimized and balanced. There's also a faster mode, which is what LG uses to advertise 1 millisecond greater gray response times. However, this mode is rife with overshoot, which is noticeable while gaming as a bright trail following moving objects. It's not as severe as the first generation of nano IPS panels, but I don't think this mode is ideal, especially compared to the fast mode, which offers the best experience. Performance across the refresh range is an interesting discussion. Using the fast mode, performance holds up pretty well at high refresh rates, 120Hz and above. But when we get to 100Hz and below, overshoot starts to become more noticeable in practice, and in particular at the lower part of the refresh range. Inverse ghosting is visible in UFO tests and while gaming. We also see a fall off in cumulative deviation in response to this rise in overshoot, moving from 500-ish to the low 700 range. Meanwhile, the other viable option for variable refresh gaming is the normal mode. 
This mode is slower, shifting from a 5.5 millisecond to 8 millisecond response time, but overshoot is minimal across the entire range, and inverse ghosting is not visible even at 60 Hz. Cumulative deviation is 15% worse in the normal mode at 160Hz, but 30% better at 60Hz. So this mode is better suited to lower refresh rate gaming. What I'm in two minds over is whether the 27GP950 counts as a single overdrive mode monitor. Clearly, normal is ideal for low refresh gaming, and fast is ideal for gaming above 120Hz. But I also think the differences between normal and fast at high refresh rates are pretty minimal in practice. Fast is only slightly better. So I'd recommend the normal overdrive setting for adaptive sync gaming and say this is a borderline single overdrive mode monitor. It would benefit from variable overdrive, but the normal mode is pretty decent. Compared to other monitors, using the best overdrive mode for the highest refresh rate, the 27GB950 performs reasonably well. It ends up 21% faster than the 27GN950 at the expense of increased overshoot, and this gets it almost to the level of the new 28-inch 4K 144Hz panels we see in monitors like the Odyssey G7 S28 from Samsung. You can also see it matching the EVE Spectrum 4K's performance, which is a major competitor to the 27GP950. This suggests LG have gone through and re-optimized the overdrive settings compared to the 27GN950, which is also what we saw with the 1440p models when comparing the 27GL850 to the newer 27GP850. However, this optimization has its drawbacks. While faster at 160Hz, the same mode is no longer viable for gaming across the entire refresh rate, so we see a regression in average performance, but an improvement in overshoot. To me, these results show the 27GA950 as better for gaming in variable refresh mode, as is also the case with the EVE Spectrum 4K. Perhaps LG needed additional overdrive modes, or perhaps variable overdrive. While LG have swung the balance more from the speed side to the overshoot side with the new 27GP950, and that impacts its standings in the chart, overall the GP950 model is actually better on average in terms of cumulative deviation. It's not that much better than the 27GN950, but it is slightly better, so to me I think the response time experience overall isn't too different comparing the old model and the new model. They are different in their behaviour of course and where the strengths and weaknesses lie, but the overall picture ends up very similar. This new LG monitor also ends up slightly better than the EVE Spectrum 4K and around the mark of other 4K 144Hz monitors like the M28U and G7 S28. But it's all a bit of a much of a muchness as the range we're talking about is between 520 and 580, a difference of just 12%. This isn't very noticeable in practice and at the end of the day all of these products are very similar in response behaviour and experience. At a fixed 120Hz, for example, when hooking this display up to a PS5, the 27GP950 is again very similar in response behavior to other 4K 144Hz monitors, and effectively identical to the EVE Spectrum. At 60Hz, it falls behind the pack a bit, but benefits from no concerns around inverse ghosting. Input lag is as expected, with a processing delay below 1 millisecond. This monitor is a mid-table offering overall, but that's mostly due to its mid-range refresh rate. For those wanting a super responsive experience for competitive gaming, it could be worth getting a 1440p 240Hz display instead, which are typically around the same price as 4K 144Hz monitors. Power consumption is basically the same between the two generations of LG monitors, and no different to the other 4K 144Hz monitors that we've looked at. There's a 5W difference between best and worst at a similar size, which is negligible for real world use. Next up, we have color performance. The 27GP950, like previous LG Nano IPS monitors, is a wide gamut display with near full coverage of the P3 gamut, 98.4% in my testing, which is good enough for accurate work in that color space. It has good but not perfect coverage of Adobe RGB, not to the extent that is usable for professionals, and in total ends up with 76% Rec 2020 coverage, which is mid-tier among today's 4K gaming monitors. But it's also higher than 28-inch models like the M28U, which don't properly cover the entirety of P3, so products like the 27GP950 end up better suited for people that want a balance between creative uses and gaming. Default calibration is average, grayscale performance has a few issues, mostly around color temperature, as seen with a mild blue or cold tint to content. LG also doesn't implement an sRGB clamp by default, so regular SDR content such as YouTube videos will appear oversaturated in the monitor's default configuration. Compared to other displays, you can see this mid-table result for grayscale and color checker, and in grayscale in particular there is a regression in performance compared to the 27GN950, which had particularly good results out of the box. That's disappointing, however there is an sRGB mode available for users. 
The sRGB mode has similar grayscale performance and similar issues with the blue tint. However, the sRGB gamut emulation is effective, and this reduces oversaturation to more natural levels when viewing SDR content. The accuracy in this mode overall is good without being great, and I think it's usable enough for most people, but it does suffer from locked controls like white balance and overdrive settings. The 27GP950 is highly optimizable for a full calibration. Like most monitors, I was able to significantly reduce Delta E's using Calman software across the board, and this applies to both sRGB and P3 gamuts, as the monitor is well suited to work in both of those areas. ICC profiles are available for our Patreon and Floatplane members. The 27GP950 has good maximum brightness, though fundamentally no change over the 27GN950. It can still do around 430 nits, which is what this panel is capable of. Minimum brightness is also basically the same, though unfortunately it doesn't get very dim. I'd have liked to see below 50 nits here for those using this display in dark rooms. The contrast ratio seen here is good for an IPS panel and identical to the EVE Spectrum 4K. This panel is not like 1440p nano IPS monitors which have a terrible contrast ratio. The 4K panels have always been at or above 1000 to 1 and this is no exception. The results are actually above average for an IPS. Where it falls down though is not having a high contrast ratio overall. It gets smashed by VA monitors like the Odyssey G7 which have much deeper blacks. Uniformity was very good with no major deviations to brightness across the panel. The color tone differed very slightly with my unit from the left side to the right side, but only an eagle eye viewer would notice something like that. LG panels generally have great uniformity. HDR performance is next, and this panel has poor HDR performance. The major issue here is the lack of proper local dimming hardware. Despite being Display HDR 600 certified, the 27GP950 has only 15 or perhaps 16, it is kind of hard to tell, edge lit dimming zones. This does not give the monitor enough control to dim small areas. The usual experience is anything bright in the center of the display will see huge amounts of haloing extend from that bright object to the edges of the display. However, the display does have adequate brightness and color performance characteristics. Just quickly running through some HDR performance graphs, we can see that the 27GP950 is capable of around 750 nits of peak brightness in a 10% window, similar to the 27GN950 but below the best HDR monitors. However, that performance falls off to around 450 nits of sustained brightness for large window sizes over a period of a minute or so. That's going to be fine for most use cases, such as bright flashes, but it's also not ideal. However, the major issue is, of course, the contrast ratio. There's no performance improvement here versus the 27GN950. In the absolute best case scenario, comparing a fully black screen to a fully white flash screen, I was only able to achieve a 10,600 to 1 contrast ratio. Good enough to pass display HDR600 certification, but not sufficient for good or true HDR capabilities. This holds true for the best case single frame contrast, which tests local dimming. Even in the best cases for local dimming, showing a bright and dark element far apart, the 27GP950 just doesn't get dark enough, limiting performance to again around 10,600 to 1. This is well short of the best HDR monitors. Then for worst case contrast, we're only getting native panel performance here because this display simply does not have the capability to dim bright and dark areas close together. This severely limits the display from producing an image that looks correct for HDR playback. Most of the time you'll be getting a bright SDR experience or slightly better than SDR experience. Accuracy in the HDR mode is also mediocre, a decent portion of the EOTF curve is accurate, but at the low and high ends it doesn't hold properly, either being too bright or too dark. Specifically in that low brightness range, basically the bottom 20% of the EOTF range is too bright, and the bottom 10% is not reproduced well at all. This hurts shadow detail, the panel simply isn't capable of HDR level shadows and blacks. The final section of this review is new for 2022 and we're calling it the Hub Essentials Checklist. This is a series of checks to assess a monitor for key feature inclusions and misleading advertising, measuring the listed specs and features compared to our testing results. LG does well in the first section through including full bandwidth HDMI 2.1 ports. In color performance, LG lists 10-bit performance, and this is possible, though I believe it's through FRC rather than a native 10-bit panel. It does get knocked down for limitations in the sRGB mode. Also, LG do advertise factory calibration, and in the sRGB mode, the performance is good enough to just meet our fairly loose threshold for calibration.
The main area where LG sees penalties is in motion performance. LG advertises a 1 millisecond greater gray response time, but this is misleading as it's only possible to hit that in the fastest mode, which has noticeable inverse ghosting. It also doesn't include backlight strobing at all. Then for HDR, this is a mostly fake HDR experience with inadequate dimming zones and contrast for HDR content. But in good news, I didn't spot other issues or defects with the panel. From a technical standpoint, there are many areas of the LG 27GP950 that are very decent. After all, it's taking a product that we already reviewed and thought was great and tweaking a few things here and there. The major addition is HDMI 2.1, which makes it much easier to recommend for a wider variety of use cases, such as for those that enjoy PC and console gaming. Most areas to performance are very solid. The overall response time experience is similar to other modern IPS panels, and it has a small bonus of a 160Hz refresh rate, while a lot of other monitors are still at 144Hz. It also manages to exceed its competitors in the color performance side of things, with a wider color gamut, brighter panel, and respectable contrast ratio for an IPS monitor. This is a great display for both 4K high refresh gaming and dabbling in content creation or consumption, and I love monitors that are versatile like that. On hardware, there's only a few negative points. It does fail 10 of 36 checklist items, which is a decent result, mostly around misleading advertising of response times and poor HDR performance. But if you think of this as an SDR gaming display and realize that none of its competitors are good at HDR either, I think there's a lot to like about the 27GP950. Except the price. The major issue to this display is simply that we're not in 2020 anymore when the first 27GN950 was released. There have been significant steps forward in the 4K monitor market since then, including the introduction of cheaper 28-inch panels, new 32-inch form factors, and even the emergence of more 1440p 240Hz displays, which essentially compete at the same price. So LG charging $900 US for this monitor is ridiculous. That's more than the 27GN950 debuted at. I do think this monitor is better than the Gigabyte M28U or Samsung Odyssey G7 S28, but both of these are often available for $700 or less. I just don't think the LG variant is adding $200 worth of value. The main differentiating features are a wider color gamut and display HDR600 support, but we already know the HDR performance is bad and not all gamers need the extra gamut. So in my opinion, it's the price that really kills this recommendation here. The 27GP950 needs to be no more than $750, ideally $700. LG are also pitting this up against several other displays at the same price. While I probably wouldn't recommend buying from EVE as a company, and you can check out my review on the Spectrum 4K for why that is, the Spectrum 4K is a superior product using the same panel at the same price. It has greater ability to tune overdrive settings, better factory calibration, it includes backlight strobing, and the design is nicer. There's also the Samsung Odyssey G7 to consider, and other top-end 1440p 240Hz monitors like the ASUS PG279QM. So after all of that, the LG 27GP950 ends up being a disappointment. LG either needed to deliver a sizable leap in performance or reduce the price, and they ended up doing neither. The monitor market is not standing still, and unfortunately, that isn't going to cut it in 2022. Anyway, that's it for this review of the LG 27GP950. If you're interested in buying one of these monitors or a similar product that we've talked about throughout this review, we do have links to check pricing in the description below. Down there, you'll also find links to our Patreon and Floatplan accounts if you want to support our independent monitor testing. We do buy a lot of monitors throughout the year to review, and that does come from the support of our Patreon members. You also get access to things like our Discord community, ICC profiles, all sorts of good stuff. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.